what is a flower horn? What's that thing on the top of his head? Where does it come from? How do you keep it? How big does it get? How mean is it? And then, you know, really what to expect um, in a real life situation with this fish at your home. That's what we're going to be talking about this video. So First of all, fish games for everyone. You can believe that. You got questions? I got answers. None of this stuff is really all that hard. You just haven't heard it like I heard it yet. But you got to subscribe to be live. Yo, what is up, all you Stone Cold, Illmatic, Superfly, Spunky Monkeys, King Kongs of Aquariums? You watching Aquafunk, the original UFO. That's right, the unadulterated funky one. Today we're going to be talking about flower horn sickness. Um, Real touchy subject. I'm going to go over all the things that uh, you need to know about this fish. I mean, yeah, you can read up about it all you want to. But as far as keeping it, I'm going to keep it at a very basic and practical level. All If you ever watch my channel, you know that... Um, I really don't like regurgitating what I read on the internet. I like first-hand accounts so I can bring to you my truth. And that's what I'm going to do with this fish. You're going to know exactly what to expect as a normal fish keeper. I find that a lot of times when you read stuff, especially on the internet, it's coming from the aspect of like a hardcore, um, super anal um, lover of this particular species. So a lot of the things that they say is extra. Um, but I'm gonna give you the real deal, Holy Field. Ready? So let's let's get let's get into the meat and potatoes on why you've been here. All right. First of all, what is a flower horn cichlid? A flower horn cichlid is a hybrid. It's a hybrid cichlid from. Now here's the funny part. Some people will say it's from two species, three species. I personally think it's from a multiple mul multiple um, species to make up this fish. I do know one fish that is definitely involved in this fish is the trimac. That's a, that's a core ingredient to this fish. Some people say it's the Midas. Some people say it's the Red Devil. Some people say it's this, that, and the other. Um, I think they're all right. I think it, it, it. I think this fish has got a lot of a lot of fish in it. So that's what it is. And with it being a hybrid, it's kind of like taboo in a lot of circles when you're talking about the fish keeping hobby. Some people are diehard purists where they don't think men man should be messing around with. Um, fishes, genetics, and all that, and I get it, I get it, but it's here, and it ain't going nowhere, so, um, while they might feel that way, and I, I totally get it, on the other hand, I'm like, you know, get over it, these fish are considered good luck in Asia, so, having them in your home is supposed to bring good fortune, I think that's more of a marketing ploy, um, to try and get people to buy them, um, Kind of like those videos, you know, people be like, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get seven years of good luck and da 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 da. Uh, it's all market employee. While, while we're on the subject, if you if you if you hit the subscribe button, um, there's a good chance that men will want to be you and females will want to be with you. Just saying. Um, or vice versa. You know, I don't know how you roll. The fish that created this flower horn cichlid is a. Uh, they're all from Central America, but. The people who actually created it were in Asia, and I think it was 1990 when they first came out. So that means they were. Hello. I'm just your friendly neighborhood flower horn. You know you want me. Just look at me. Oh yeah. More so that telling me that um, people are starting to get wrap their heads around it. So I'm interested to see it about five to ten years, twenty years, how people are going to feel about this fish then. Aggression. These, these fish, they're, they're mad aggressive. Killers. Meanies. Here's the thing with, with, when you're talking about hybrids, a lot of times the hybrid is more aggressive than the fish that created it. Now take into consideration that the fish that created the Central American cichlids, they're all super aggressive to begin with. So this fish is mad aggressive. This this particular one that I have in this tank killed all his brothers and sisters. So being that this fish was made from a bunch of Central American cichlids, if you can keep a convict, if you keep a Jack Dempsey, if you can keep a fire mouth, you can keep this fish. You want to keep the temperature around 80, give or take two degrees up and down. Um, he did a, a, a diet of primarily um, protein, but you want to supplement it like right here, right here, see, 
I got a mix of stuff in here. I mean, it says Omega One Cichlid Pellet Super Color, but uh, it's actually got um, some um, veggie wafers in there. It's got some bug bites. It's got some hikari, and uh, I like to do that so that it it, it uh it gives it a little you know varies their diet, gives them a bunch of um, different types of minerals um, and vitamins. You can also feed it um, frozen food. I like to do the shrimp because it's easy. Like you get some little popcorn shrimp, you thaw it out in non-chlorinated water. You can take the water from the tank and put it in a, you know, get one little popcorn shrimp, put it in here, and uh, and uh, thaw it out and, and give it to them. They they love this stuff. I mean, look at that. It didn't even. I don't even know if you can see that. I'm gonna have to do an instant replay or something. Let me try one more. Let me try one more. That's one good thing about this fish. They're not picky. They're not picky eaters. Bang! Got it. They're not picky eaters. So. Um, I like to do the shrimp because I, I feel like the, the pigment in the shrimp um, leaches out into the fish and it gives them a little bit more brilliant color. I do, I do know that if you look online, you can find some um, special flower horn formula food um, for flower horns. They, they do get on the big side. You, they, the males can get anywhere from like 12, I've heard 16 inches. But to be honest with you, I'm gonna stay in the 12 inch range. The females will get smaller, six to eight inch. And uh, so so you're, you're talking about a, a decent sized tank. I would I would suggest and recommend for a single male flower horn, a 75 gallon. Um, female, um, you can do a 55. Now you will, see a, you will see male flower horns in 55s. And the reason why you will see male flower horns in a 55 is because a lot of the big box stores, um, they sell, um, Red Dragon flower, which this is a Red Dragon and something else mix, and um, they also sell pretty much on a regular basis at a decent price, 55. So you'll see that combination all the time. I ain't gonna be mad at you to be honest with you, but and I'm gonna get into a little bit later why I do recommend the 75 bigger. You're gonna wanna keep the water as clean as possible, and the reason why look, if, every fish you wanna keep the water clean as possible. But with these guys, is it's you're gonna feed them very often because you don't want them to grow, right? So you're gonna have to feed them heavy. They're, they're gonna want to. They're gonna come up to the tank. You're gonna want. Look, we all do it. I don't care who you are. We we overfeed our fish. I'm guilty of it. I try not to do it, but sometimes he's just, you know, he's like begging. He's like, yo, fuck, hit me up. So you know, I give in. I I, I overfeed them. And plus, you know, while they're little like that, you wanna. You want to go ahead and, and, and grow them up. Plus, the clean water helps them grow faster. But with all that extra food comes extra doo doo. So, you want to go ahead and make sure that water is nice and clean. So, as far as filtration goes, you're going to want to double the filtration. If you have a 75 gallon and it comes, and you have a filter designed for a 75 gallon, get two of those filters. Let's talk about tank mates. I've seen on the internet where people have had flower horns with other other fish and and when you get an aquarium especially if, if you're kind of new to fish keeping your idea of a fish tank is multiple fish living in harmony and alongside each other yeah that's not that I, I know you've seen it you've probably seen it seen it on the internet on YouTube I'm not gonna suggest it. I was thinking about this particular part of the video that I did and I, I was thinking to myself listen by me saying I don't suggest you put flower horns with any other fish that's that's strictly for people who are kind of uneasy about keeping aggressive fish if you are an experienced aggressive fish keeper I am sure you probably are able to do that but you also know what to look for and um, small tricks to make it work whereas um, this video is pretty much designed for the you know newer aggressive fish keeper so don't bite my head off just just don't yeah just I think you just want I think the people who have those tanks with a multiple fish in with a flower on, I think they went through a lot of fish to get to that that sweet spot. I, I, I don't recommend you doing that. These fish cost anywhere from 100, 150, up to $600. And if you think you go, okay, well, this fish is mad aggressive, so I'm gonna get like a Dovi, because it's also mad aggressive, and they'll just kind of butt heads and leave each other alone, that's not gonna happen. Somebody gonna kill somebody. And with them not having tank mates, they're gonna depend on you um, for social interaction because they are a social fish you can see on it on, on on YouTube all day long people petting their fish that's that's pretty much um, that's pretty much uh, that's not that's not like a one-off thing I think most people who have flower horns can do some type of interaction like that with the flower so if, if these guys kill its brothers and sisters kills anything that has a tank 
how do you kill them? Again, I mean, how do you kill them? How do you breed them? Again, you probably seen on the internet we had a male and female that's swimming alongside each other, and that that's 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 either um, very rare that a male and female can live together like that, or they're just doing it for mating purposes. More times than not, they're gonna fight each other. People don't accidentally breed flower horns. It, it, there's a process when it comes to breeding flower horns because they want to kill each other. So there's, there's dividers involved. There's, inter, there's, there's introducing the fish to that fish. And, you know, when, when, you, when you let the male in with the female, you gotta watch them to make sure there's no fighting. You gotta let them do a little bit of fighting, um, lip locking, but you gotta separate it before it gets to, So it, it's a process, it's a process. So as far as breeding flower horns, it's something that you um, are not gonna accidentally do. People purposely and skillfully breed flower horns. Flower horns being a hybrid, a lot of them when they first came out were um, sterile. The males were sterile. But over time, I've seen where a lot more males are non-sterile. So, well, uh, the males, um, like I said, will, I, I'm gonna say 12 inches, um, 13. The females, six to eight inches. Now, generally speaking, the males get a big hump on top of their head. That nuchal hump, Okay, before I, that thing is called a nuchal hump, all right? Nuchal hump, but you'll hear a lot of people um, call it a K-O-K. -K. That's because they don't want to call it the word that K-O-K, -K. they don't want to say cock, right? Serves no, no purpose whatsoever. The females do not see this um, large cock. <laughs> it's just what people decided was aesthetically pleasing. A big old humongous and the females have a smooth head generally speaking I have seen females with a slight hump on their head like a knot um, kind of like this one but this one's still young so that, that, that doesn't mean nothing um, and I have seen males with that same little knot and no hump so without flipping them over and venting them and looking at, at their giblets um, when they're young like that there's there's, there's no way to tell there's not, not one thing because the males and the females as far as coloration goes are both brilliant a lot of times you look at fish and you're like that one got more color than that one that one's got to be the male that, that's not necessarily the case on um with flower horns but but once they do get to the spot where they feel like breeding they'll find a flat rock or a slate or clear out the sand on the bottom and um the female will lay eggs and the male will come behind and, and uh, uh, uh fertilize and then normally somebody got to move because someone's going to get killed. So you might want to take the male out after fertilization occurs, if that's what you're doing. Decor. Decorations. I don't suggest you have any decorations in there. I mean, this tank pretty much just has some round rocks at the bottom and some sand. The filter and the heater. Here's the thing. I know for a fact, first-hand knowledge of two people who have flower horns, that the flower horn got spooked and darted, tried to cram underneath a rock like fish do, or driftwood, and it, it got, that nuchal hump got cut, sliced, and uh, it got infected, and it was pretty much a downhill battle. That, that I, I, I haven't seen a, a, a flower horn come out of that type of injury. So, um, aside from maybe some soft silk plants, um, I really wouldn't put anything in the aquarium. Like I said, this fish is going to have absolutely nothing in the tank for um, interaction or, or, or to, to keep it, you know, to, 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 for it to stimulate it. So it's looking to you to do that. So pay attention to your fish, show yourself attention, man. Uh, how much do flower hoes cost? I talked about that. They range in price from, uh, I mean, I have seen them at like Petco and PetSmart for like $20, $25. Um, and that's for like red dragons, which this is a red dragon and something else. That's a, that's the thing. That's the thing with these things. Um, there's so many variations, colors, monk, king monkey and monkey and comfas and short bodies and all that. The, the the fish keeping community, the scientific community, will not give this fish a scientific name, and I'm not mad at them for that because I understand why. So many people mix this fish up so often it would be impossible and, and, and without being 100% knowing what went into creating this fish um, and and I, I don't think there's one person who knows 
um, how do you how do you pick and say this fish is the representation of the aka flower horse because there's so many different types and they interbreed so quickly and, and readily so I'm not mad at them for that but the fact that uh, it's just now really being accepted into shows it is a good thing it's a good thing for the flower horse the bad thing about keeping this fish is this aggression level um, highly aggressive highly aggressive so you're not going to have uh, uh, the, 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 the the full tank with fish everywhere that you want it the cost the fish you know can be pricey especially if you want some of those fancier designer colors and the fact that you're going to have a 75 or bigger with just one fish in it those three things are kind of like a big downer but on the on the pro side on, on, on the positive note um this fish makes a incredible wet pet i mean it's like the the definition of the of, of the of the word wet pet because you can pet the damn thing right they're really hardy they're not all that sensitive to water they feed readily and and to be honest with you this this fish has become a huge hit in my house especially with my daughter because every time she comes to the tank especially with her being this high you know it's right there it's right there and, and they interact and it's, it's really nice it it sparks interest in her in the hobby um and and that's what you want, right? You want everybody in the family to, to, to take an interest and you want everybody to, to feel like it's, you know, this, this pet is a part of the family. So that's pretty much the biggest plus. It's this interaction and all that. You know, it's beautiful. It's got beautiful colors and all that. But the biggest is how personable this fish is. You're not going to be disappointed with this fish. In fact, I wouldn't even, I would not even, if you were thinking about getting your first cichlid and your first 75-gallon tank, I would not talk you out of getting this fish. I would not say, oh no, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not a, you know, experienced in keeping cichlids enough to keep this fish. I don't think this fish that needs a whole lot of special care, experienced care. You just need to know the basics of keeping any aquarium, I and mean, you can keep this fish and follow the rules that I just laid out for this particular fish. You'd be good. You'd be good. You'd be good.